Hi, I'm Simon with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we're going to show you how to repair your appliance. Are you ready? Remember, anytime you work on your appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we'll show you how to replace the round style oven and broiler igniter in a GE range. It's going to be a very easy repair, should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. For this job, we're going to need a flat desk screwdriver, a quarter inch nut driver, and a pair of wire strippers. When you open up the package, you're going to get a new round style oven or broiler igniter, some mounting screws, a bracket, and a couple of ceramic connectors, and also you'll have an instructions. The round style oven or broil igniter is installed either on a broil or on a bake burners. It assists in opening the gas valve and ignites the gas that enters the burner. There are a few reasons why the igniter should be checked and replaced. If the igniter won't glow at all, or if it glows but the gas valve won't open, or if there is a gas smell and the burner ignites with an explosion. We're going to start with removing the door, open it partially, then grab on the sides firmly and lift it off the hinges and put it aside and be careful don't break the glass. Now we can remove the oven racks, pull the one straight out, lift up and take out. So we're going to remove the oven bottom. For that we need to take out the two screws that hold it, uh, one on each side at the back. I'm going to use a flat blade screwdriver. So we're going to remove the oven bottom. If you notice that Simon, uh, who is tired of getting his fingers cut and scratched, using the gloves. So we're going to slide the fingers into the cutouts and lift up the rear end of the oven bottom and then we're going to pull the front end from under the lip. And now we can pull this oven bottom away. So uh, we're going to remove the drawer, pull it out, lift it up and uh, take it away. Get comfortable underneath if you can. And uh, we're going to remove this uh, wire from the gas valve. Don't hurt yourself. Then the second wire from here, I'm going to pull it out to expose this connector. And then we're going to disconnect this too. Pull it apart. All right, make sure that this end is not going to disappear in this opening. So kind of bend it a little bit. And then we are going to use the four inch nut driver. We're going to remove the steel screws. The screws are holding the burner. Okay. Now we're going to the oven inside the cavity. So we're going to take out this uh, quarry screw from the top of the burner. That would be the last screw that holds the burner. So now we're going to remove the burner by pulling it straight up. Take it to the workable surface and we're going to replace the igniter. All right, let's place the burner on the surface. Then I'm going to show you a little trick. We're going to squeeze some water under the screws here to help them to get loose from inside also. Give it a couple of seconds. And then we can, uh, using the quarter inch nut driver, take out the screws. And now we can remove the old igniter. So we need to cut off this uh, both connectors and we're going to splice it onto the new igniter. I'm going to use the side cutters. And we're going to cut one and cut the second one off. 
And we're gonna s clean this using the uh, strippers. Strip off approximately quarter inch, maybe a little bit more. All right, and now we're gonna install it onto the new igniter. This is the old round style oven or broiler igniter next to the new one. If you don't have this part, you can get it from appliancepartspros.com. All right, now we're gonna attach the, uh, these uh, connectors to the igniter. For that, we're gonna use those uh, two ceramic uh, wire nuts that was provided in the kit. Yeah, doesn't matter which one we're gonna take at this point, so I'm gonna put the ceramic wire nut and turn it clockwise and make it tight. Make sure it's not coming off. Then the second one. If you noticed, I'm not twisting the wires before putting a, a ceramic wire nut on it. This way, the connector would be much stronger. All right, so we can install it now onto the burner. Bring the burner in. Place the igniter. And we're going to secure it with the two quarter inch uh, screws that we took her out earlier. Next, we're going to install it into the oven. So we're going to bring in the bake igniter and uh, we're going to place the wires through this cutout at the back. And install that, uh, the burner. I'm gonna look underneath and make sure it sits on the top of the orifice. And we're going to secure it uh, with one screw, quarter inch screw right here at the top. And now we can go underneath. So now we're going to match the holes at the back there and secure the burner to the rear wall. A couple of quarter inch screws. And we're going to connect those two wires. One goes on the uh, safety gas valve here. And the other one would be connected to this white plug. And then slide that plug into the opening in the back here. All right. So it's a time to put the drawer back in. I'm going to lift it over the supports and uh, tilt it a little bit up and slide it in. We're installing the oven bottom. We're going to place that front edge under the lip here, push it in, and then the lower down the, the rear end. And we're going to secure the oven bottom with uh, two screws, one on each side. And then manually and the second one, 
and then I'm going to use this lead lead screwdriver and I'm going to tighten them up. So we need to remove these two quarter inch screws to release the uh, old igniter. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, water. I'm using sponge and I'm going to squeeze a little water. It's not necessarily be soapy water, but it doesn't matter. Just let it uh, sit for a minute. And then you can uh, take the screws out. I'm going to use a quarter inch nut driver. And next we're going to take this screw out. This is a quarter inch screw also. And that will uh, release the cover, cover, little cover plate. And take it off. And we'll have some wiring coming down here. To get to the plug, we need to remove the cover. The two quarter inch screws are going to be taken out and we can take off the cover. This is the igniter plug. Uh, squeeze the locking tabs and pull them apart. So now we can free that uh, plug and push that igniter through. Uh, let it hang for a little bit. And now when the plug is disconnected at the back, we can pull out the igniter, the harness, and the plug through this opening. This is the old igniter. We're going to use the uh, side cutters and the strippers. And we're going to cut all the plug. And we will do that not at the same level as you see probably about a half inch apart and I'm gonna bring a new igniter and then strip the ends less than half an inch and then I'm gonna use that uh, two wire nuts, the ceramic wire nuts that provides in the kit and we're going to connect the wires. There's no difference which wire you connect first. Make sure that uh, tight, the wire nut is going real tight. Technically we're doing exactly the same thing that we need for a Oh, an igniter. Then the wires. All right, and now it's ready to go into the oven. So we're going to bring a new igniter and we're going to put it through the opening here. The plug should go all the way back. So we're going to install this cover and they secured with the quarter inch screw. And now we can attach the igniter. And a couple of quarter inch screws. And now we can tighten the first one. And we can go to the back and connect the plug. So I can cover the opening in the insulation by bringing it together a little bit so the gap should be a minimal and then we can uh, connect the plug now we're going to install the cover Place it over, match the hole here on this side, and secure it with a one quarter inch screw. 
and we go to the other side, same thing, match the holes, and put the screw in. The yarn racks goes back in, I'm going to put it on the rail, slightly angled, and then uh, straight it up and push it in. So we can install the door back on the hinges and slowly slide it down. Make sure it's in all the way. Then we're gonna slowly open and close the door to make sure it's installed properly. And now when we're done, you can plug the wrench back in. Thank you for being a part of another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. For any of your future appliance repair projects, please check out our other videos available on our site, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram.